Hey everybody, welcome, hope you're well this morning, my name's Dan Latto and welcome to this Facebook live show, uh, the Mindset and Hustle show, welcome, 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 today's Thursday, we're live, it's, well it's 10.26 here in Spain and it's 9.26 back in the UK and I hope you're doing really well, so if you're watching this then welcome, just put your name down below, let's uh, just say hello, that'd be nice, yeah, you can also, if you've got a website for your business, you want to stick that in there, then just stick that in there as well and let me know whereabouts you are, let me know what you're doing today. It's a Thursday, it's a Mindset and Hustle show, my name's Dan Latto, and in today's show we're going to help you just run through 13 different things that you can do to make you a better you, basically, for you to start getting some better results, which is something that we all want, let's face it. So, if you've got any questions, you've got any comments, you just stick them in the box below. Uh, periodically, I'll be looking at different things, I've got two screens, so if I'm looking over here, I've got a screen over here, and if I'm looking down, it's because I've, I've got the camera on top of the screen. Uh, we're using a little bit of software to help us do Facebook Live uh, rather than using the mobile phone. It's pretty awesome stuff. Uh, let's just go and see if anyone's got any questions to begin with. Um, pretty sure we won't have because we're just about to start, but uh, let's just go back here. Okay, so the first thing, let's just move this over. The first thing, in order for you to start getting better results, the absolute first thing is... There we go. Is you've got to start defining exactly what it is that you want. And most people don't do this. Most people, just for whatever reason, cannot seem to work out exactly what it is that they want. And, and when that happens, let me pull me back to me. There we go. And, and when you don't know what you want, then how do you know if you've got it? It's crazy, right? So let's say that you know you want to go somewhere, you want to go on a trip, but you don't know where you want to go. Well, how do you know when you've got there? How do you know when to stop and set up camp or book a hotel room? You know, whereas if you say, right, I'm going to go to San Diego, totally random, but let's say you're going to go to San Diego, then great, you know exactly what the steps are now to go to San Diego, right? You need to book a flight, probably, unless you live in the States, near San Diego, but even then you still might need a flight. You're then going to probably need to book some hotels, okay, or maybe you're going to stay with friends. You're going to need transfers from the airport to get to your hotel. You're going to need transfers from your house to get to the airport here in the UK or wherever it happens to be. But if you don't know where you're going, then how can you plan all these different things? So it's almost instant, isn't it? Pick a, pick a destination. It can be anywhere. Let's say Mars. Let's do something totally random. Let's say I want to go to Mars. Okay, now I've defined exactly what I want. Do you think we've actually uh, found some ways of maybe getting to Mars? Yeah, totally. Do you think we might need to earn a couple of billion pounds? Maybe. But at least we understand that that's, if that's what absolutely we want, then that's the process that we actually have to start taking. In order for us to get what we want, we've got to define it really clearly, really specifically. If you want a Ferrari, what colour Ferrari? What Ferrari? <laughs> There's lots of different ones. So which one is it? Which one is it that you actually want? And you've got to start working out clearly exactly what that is. Uh, look, if you've got any questions about defining exactly what you want, I know some people say, oh no, you don't want to be doing stuff like that. You don't want to be defining what you want. Girls just make people depressed. Uh, because what happens if you don't achieve the goal? Well, look, when you're setting a goal, you've got two areas to focus on. The first one is the goal, okay? And then the dreaming of the goal is the second part. Now, if you don't set any goals, I mean, let's say that you do set a goal and you don't achieve it, okay? But there's two parts. At least you've enjoyed part number one. Part number one being, I've enjoyed dreaming about the goal. But if, if you're not uh, doing that, if you're not even dreaming about the goal, then you've not enjoyed that that part. I mean, I, I dreamt about going on Facebook Live. It was one of the things I wanted to do and create something as professional as this. This is awesome. I mean, look at this. Look at the stuff that we can do with this. I mean, how cool is this? We, we've got loads of different graphics. We've got loads of different images we can chuck up. Uh, we can run this just like it's a normal TV show. I mean, it's just phenomenal, right? But... Uh, and it's, it's an investment in technology, and it's not, you know, it's not cheap, but it's not relatively expensive either. But it's, it's one of the things that I really wanted to create. But just dreaming about creating something like this was loads and loads of fun. And you could say, well, what if, what if it doesn't come true? Then you're going to be disappointed. Well, what's up with being a bit disappointed? Oh, my goodness me. Life is full of disappointments, is it not? I mean, <laughs> let's face it. Life is just absolutely rammed full of disappointments. <laughs> job, relationship, money, dream, for goodness sake, start dreaming. And then when you start dreaming, you'll start doing. But you've got to define exactly what it is that you want. So let's say you want that Ferrari. I should pull up a shot of a Ferrari. 
Uh, but let's let's say that you want a Ferrari. What colour do you want? What type of seats do you want? Do you want the black with a red piping? Do you want a yellow Ferrari? Which one is it? A 355, 360, 430? Which one is it, right? So you've got to get really clear. And then when you know exactly what it is that you want, why not go work out how much is it going to cost me? So like we could go to Auto Trader. Should we do that? Should we do that live? No. Uh, let's do that live now. I love doing stuff like this. So we could go to Auto Trader because this is really important for you guys to be able to understand um, is how to be able to spell Auto, <laughs> auto Trader. Oh, there we go, it came up anyway. So let me just pull this over and we can show you my screen. Oh, I've gone to autotrader.com. Let's get the UK one because that's the one that I know how to use. Uh, auto trader.co.uk there we go and let's just pull that up for us to see uh, there we go okay let's get rid of this you've got to love this software haven't you so let's say what Ferrari do we want folks you tell me which one would you like uh, let's go back here so we go uh, postcode ls1 for jj one of my properties <laughs> uh, distance within 200 miles I mean which one do you want you've got to get really specific because and bear with me on this while we're just doing this just bear with me because you're going to love the reason why we're covering this so why is it that you want a Ferrari uh, which one is it not why do you want one because it, it's nothing to do with me but let's have a quick look at cars and uh, okay just while we're waiting for that Okay, so what we're going to do is we'll just have a look at a couple of cars. There's a couple of fake cars here. These are cars that are uh, not Ferraris, uh, but they look like Ferraris. Uh, let me show you which ones they are, because it's quite interesting. So this one up here, which you'll be able to see in a second. This one here at the top. Uh, these are fake Ferraris. It's a 360, but it's actually probably ba oh, it's based on a Peugeot 406. So you've got to be careful, make sure you're buying the right thing. So this one here... Right hand drive, it's £50,000. Like £50,000 sounds like it's totally not doable, okay? 50 grand. But you know what? When I bought my Porsche, my Porsche was like £43,000. And there was a time when I thought I would never spend £43,000 on a car. Stupid. By the way, having done that, which was about 12 years ago, uh, 14 years ago actually, when I spent that amount of money on a car, I didn't think that it was a stupid amount back then. Hindsight, I do think it's a silly amount to spend on a car now. It depends on what you're earning. Everything's relative. If you've got 100 grand in the bank, you go ahead. 150 grand, you go ahead, you go do it. If you're generating 10 to 15,000 pounds every month, and you go ahead, go get that car. But if you're not, and you're doing it to look wealthy when you haven't got the wealth, then don't do it. But on this car right here, it's 50,000 pounds. Now, 50,000 pounds, I mean, I, I'll tell you, it, I put a 12,000 pound deposit down, and then I think I paid, I don't know, 500 pounds a month. So, if your dream is to have a Ferrari, do you think you can afford a Ferrari? Well, of course you can. But it, it's maybe 10 grand down and 500 quid a month, or let's say 1,000 pounds a month, whatever you want to do, right? Let's say you go with 1,000 pounds. Do you think that if you spent a lot of time focusing, that you could actually allocate 1,000 pounds and put 1,000 pounds to one side? So 1,000 pounds is, is 10 products a month at 100 pounds profit. Or it's uh, one coaching client at 1,000 pounds a month. Or it's five coaching clients at £200 a month, or whatever it is that you happen to sell, right? Then yes, you can afford a Ferrari. But you've got to get really specific, because until you start getting specific and working out what the costs are going to be to buy a Ferrari, you're never going to be able to do it. It's just going to be a dream. And we don't want you to dream. I mean, we want you to dream, but we don't want it to stay a dream. We want you to buy this stuff. By the way, if, if the Ferrari is the first thing that you're thinking about buying, and you need to take a step back, because there's other things that you need to be buying more than Ferraris. You'd be buying into property and other assets that are going to generate income. So let, let's put it this way. Let's say that you had some money given to you. And I know people who've been given some money. What do they do? They go off and they go and buy. I mean, it still looks awesome in my book, right? It's 15 years old. But what happens in another 15 years? It's 30 years old. Maybe you want a newer Ferrari. But you can't do that because you spent all your money on the Ferrari. Whereas if you put that money into property... If you put that money into property, then what's going to happen is that that property is going to generate cash flow each and every month for the rest of your life. And that money can go into buying a Ferrari once a year, well, once every 10 years or whatever that happens to be. But you've got to start, um, you've, you've got to start, wait, we'll just pull this back. You've got to start defining exactly what it is that you need. Because if you're not going to do that, then you're going to find it really difficult getting to exactly where you want to get to. Okay, so what's the next thing then? 
So the next thing that you've got to do is you've got to start setting the alarm early. I mean, oh, early mornings. I hate early mornings. I hate them. I just did a podcast recently with a guy called Mark Evans. He's based in uh, Florida. Uh, great guy. Flies private jets everywhere. Very wealthy. This guy's doing between 50 and 100 property deals every single month. Uh, 50 and 100 deals every single month. I think that's amazing. Like, like, do you think that's amazing? I, I do. Like, do you think he's, he's wealthy doing 50 to 100 deals every single month? Of course he is. And he's wealthy because he sets the alarm early. He's just got a, a nine-month-old boy uh, that he's, he's really enjoying right now. But he gets up uh, <laughs> with a nine-month-old boy. Uh, our little girl's just turned 18 months, really. So uh, having gone through that experience, you up at all hours anyway. So it's actually easier to get up when you've got children that age. Um, but usually because they're up as well. But he gets up at 5am, does a couple of hours of work, spends time with his son um, and his partner, and then does whatever he needs to do in the business to go out and start earning some money. But he can split his day into two different days. So you've got between 5 and 12 on one day, I should do it this side, between 5 and 12 on one day, and then, I don't know, between 1 and 8 the same day. So he splits his days into two separate days, so he's going to get twice as much work done. But you can really only do that when you start setting the alarm early. And so I'm pointing at the screen there. <laughs> I know you can't see that, but I'm actually pointing at the screen. So, and I, I hate getting up early. I hate it. Look, you've got a choice. You're either going to get up early or you're going to go to bed late. Whichever one works for you is fine. And if you're working nine to five, Monday to Friday, then I get that. But you're only working nine to five, Monday to Friday. There's only 40 hours in a week right there. What about between six and 11? Monday to Friday, there's five hours times five, there's another 25 hours there, plus another seven and a half hours on a Saturday and another seven and a half on a Sunday. And you could say, but Dan, I want family time. And I get that. So you could start at, I don't know, say, let's do the math, say five o'clock on a Saturday and a Sunday, and you could finish at 12 p.m. So you spend like morning and afternoon with the family doing whatever family is, and then 5 p.m. you lock yourself in a room and you do another seven hours. And you're working 7 till 12. How much content do you think you'd be able to create for your business if you did that? A huge, phenomenal amount. People, the biggest thing that I hear people saying is, I can't get customers. Nobody knows about me. I need to create awareness. And it's like, dude, you need to get out there and start creating as much content, quality content as you can. It's, why do you think we do the Mindset and Hustle show? We've got the Property Cash Flow show. We've got uh, Business and Property Domination. We've got three separate shows. We've got number four being a podcast. We work really hard at putting out really good quality content so that people can, first of all, find us and become aware of us. And secondly, so that it builds our credibility. Do you think that works? Of course it does. But the thing that's stopping you right now is your excuses. So you've got to start getting rid of those excuses. And you've got to start getting your... Um, Get your alarm set. Look, if you're enjoying this, then please like and share. Uh, let me just have a look and see if we've got any comments. I'm open to your questions, by the way. So if you've got any questions today. Uh, uh, Anthony Hubbard, welcome. Thank you for your comment, 911. I have no idea what that means, Anthony, but thank you so much. Um, I'm hoping that doesn't mean that there's an emergency and you need to call 911, but there you go. <laughs> so welcome. Let me move on to number three then. So, you've got to sort out what needs doing first. You have to. If you don't know what needs doing first, then like, you're going to work on, on the thing that is the least important. And so you've got to start working out exactly what are the most important things that you've got to do. Now, for example, I know people, they struggle getting out of bed, they struggle getting anything to, anything to do. Uh, and I have a time management sheet. I've, I've not printed one out for this morning. Uh, so I don't know where it is, uh, but normally I have a time management sheet. Uh, well, where is it? It should be here. I think I ripped it up because, oh, here it is. So without showing you everything that's on it, here's my time management sheet. I just shake it around so you can't see it. <laughs> it's lots of things on there. I've got a time management sheet. Uh, and so I work out exactly what needs to be done. And then not only that, this is the thing that I carry, a piece of paper I carry around with me all the time. And then when I work out what needs to be done, I use my branded pen, I don't know if you can see that up there, but my branded pen with my name and my website on it, uh, my branded pen uses the branded, I don't know if you can see that either, but it is branded, uh, <laughs> uses my branded uh, to-do list. Everything gets written down and then I put that into my time management system. And literally I create a time management schedule of tasks. 
That's exactly what I do because that's the only way for me to be able to work out what's important, work out what needs to get done first, and then actually work out whether I've actually done those tasks or not. And so if, you, if you're not working off <coughs> excuse me, a time management system that's effective, then you're all over the place. And it's definitely something that has to be worked upon. Uh, because if not, uh, then how do you know if you're working to the most efficient manner? So we had a guy and he was doing like 60, 70 hour weeks and we implemented our time management system with him. And it was very difficult for him to do because it requires a little bit of discipline. But once he got started, he reduced his 70, 60, 70 hour weeks down to like 30 hour weeks. Because he could work out what was the stuff that he didn't need to do anymore and what can I offload? And that's exactly what he did. He started offloading stuff to other people. Um, and then he just worked on the stuff that would generate the most income for him and everything else he could then offset to other people. Uh, that's exactly what you need to do. But unless you've got a time management system, then that's not going to work properly. Uh, so let's just see if we've got any other comments. And just while we're doing that, we'll talk about number four. So number four is you've got to change your network. <clears throat> Excuse me. So if, if you're still hanging around with the same people... Uh, Ah, thank you. Anthony's just saying her, his dream car is a 911. Mine, Anthony, was... Um, I don't know if you like Anthony or Tony, uh, but mine was... Let's go back to cars. Should we have a look at 911s for you, Carl? Uh, Anthony? <laughs> I don't know where I got Carl from. But, like, 911 convertibles, 10 grand. Uh, 10 grand is all it will cost you. I mean, £10,000 is nothing. Uh, well, it is, I suppose. It's something. Let's just have a look. Porsche 911s. Depends which Porsche. Oh, you said 911, didn't you? Uh, so. Oh, sorry. For some reason, I'm looking at caravans. <laughs> Definitely not caravans, guys. Not for me, anyway. If you like caravans, then well done for you. <laughs> Let's have a look at a 911 convertible. There's quite a lot. Let's go for the 966. Uh, 996. It doesn't show it up. Let's go for a 911. Let's do a search. And uh, look, if you're going to buy a 911, you want the convertible, just to uh, clarify, because it doesn't cost much more, so you might as well get the choice. And having a convertible absolutely rocks. So here we are. Let's go for this one down here. Look at that, £12,000. It's in blue, not my favourite colour. Uh, but uh, look at that. Oh, that's a beautiful looking car. £12,000, Anthony. So if you're going to finance that, let's just talk about the maths on here. Finance that, £500 a month, put two grand down, 500 a month. That's a nice looking car, isn't it? Imagine pulling up in that. Beautiful. I love the Porsche because it just, you, you work out where you want to get to and you put your foot down and it gets you there. Absolutely beautiful. Oh my God, the engine's missing. <laughs> uh, oh, it's in the boot. But what an awesome car that is. Love it. That would be nice, Auntie. How would you like turning up in one of those? <laughs> that would be pretty cool, wouldn't it? Let's just see if you've got anything to say on that. So, what, two grand down, 500 a month, that'll get you that car. Now, by the way, if all you've got is two grand and you're paying bills and you've got credit card debt, then that money needs to go off and pay down your credit cards uh, because you've got to be really clever about which type of car that you're buying because, or, or where you're spending that money because if not, that, you know... Credit card debt is like kryptonite, um, kryptonite around your neck, you know, and it just eats away at your strength. So you've got to get rid of that debt, those credit cards and that sort of thing. And then you can start investing in assets. And then when you're generating enough cash flow from the assets, that's when you buy the car. Does that make sense? I hope it does because it's so, so important. Let's move on to the next slide. Thank you, Anthony, for sharing. I really appreciate that. Uh, let me find the next slide. <laughs> Here we go. So you've got to change your network is the next slide. So you've got to start finding like-minded, successful people. There are lots of people who are like-minded. So, for example, you could go to a networking event and loads of people are not like-minded at networking events. You go to a property networking event, there's loads of like-minded people. None of them have any money. None of them are very successful or very few of them. But they're all like-minded. So just finding like-minded people is not enough. Okay, so you've actually got to find people who are also successful. So, uh, and I'm sure you've heard this as well, you know, you hang out with uh, 10 people, then you'll be the average in that 10 people. 
But if you hang out with 10 like-minded people, then that's not enough. You've got to hang out with 10 successful people. And that's the way in which you need to do it. So you've got to start changing your network. And that's quite difficult to do. You know, because you've got your mum and dad, your, your brothers and your sisters, you've got your friends down the pub, or at your local sport, five-a-side, or basketball I play, or whatever, right? So... I hang out with those guys to some extent at basketball. We all speak Spanish and I'm English and I, my Spanish is pretty, pretty dire. But I'm hanging out with people, but they're not people that I would discuss money with, if that makes sense. They're all really nice people. You know, uh, one's just had a baby and so on. It's awesome, right? Really, really nice people, but they're not the sort of people I'd hang out with to discuss money. The people I want to hang out with to discuss money are people who've got more money. They've got more assets. They're growing bigger businesses. People that I can learn from. I had a top-level conversation on Facebook, believe it or not, uh, and we were talking about some very, very technical and complicated things to do with computer systems. Now, computers was my background, that's what I used to sell. Um, but we were able to have that high-level conversation because that was my experience. And, you, and the person I was talking to earns a lot of money, is doing a lot of sales, like you know, millions and millions of pounds plus. They're the sort of people that I want to drill down and get technical with. I don't want to get technical with people who haven't got a clue. Does that make sense? So you've got to find people. Now, successful people, success can be people who've got a great relationship, people who've got a great body, people who've got a lot of money, people who've got a lot of wealth, people who've got great kids, for example. Whatever success is for you. And I know that some people give up on success, uh, like financial success, and they say things like, money doesn't make you happy. And it's like, yeah, but it does buy you a jet ski. <laughs> hey, just, we just bought a 60-inch TV, right? And I know, like, buying big TVs is really frowned upon, but it's the NBA final, so I thought, you know, why not? Um, but, you know, a 60-inch TV to watch the NBA finals, which starts tonight, that's awesome for me, right? I'm gonna, I might even stay up. It's like 1 a.m., and I can't do late nights anymore, but that's awesome, right? But you've got to start changing your network, and you've got to start finding more successful people and find a way to hang out with them. Even better than hanging out with them is find a way to add value to them. Because as soon as you can start adding value to them, you can actually start making quite a bit of money. Because you're adding value, and people will pay for value all the time. Um, the dog's just turned up. <laughs> we have a black Labrador. I should put a picture up of her, of her so you can see her. But, so you've got to start changing your network. Um, so the next one then is you've got to start identifying the skills gap. Now we've all got skills gaps and you've got to work out what's yours. What is it? What are the bits that you're struggling with? So let's say it's Facebook Live. Let's say that you really struggle with doing Facebook Live. Well, f I don't know, find a way of using it. Uh, let's just have a look. Anthony's just making some comments, that's fine. Find a way of... of um, um, using it and filling that skills gap with so much information on YouTube and online these days there's no reason to have a skills gap and you know you've got to first of all discover what that gap is so let's say you've got a problem with marketing your business well when was the last time that you actually read a book on marketing because I guarantee that probably that's going to be the problem so if you do have a problem on marketing one of our shows that we've created is the business and marketing domination show look at that we haven't got a slide lined up for it. Uh, and that's going to be a... We might do one this afternoon, actually, because it's pretty awesome. Uh, we're going to knock out a whole bunch of Facebook Live stuff. If you don't know how to do marketing, come and watch that show. Go and buy a book on marketing. Uh, pay some money and understand about sales funnels. There's lots of things that you can do that you should be doing uh, to, one, identify what that gap is, and two, to start f plugging that gap. And it takes time and it takes effort. So those two days that we split up, you know, your early mornings and your late nights, your early mornings can be work um, that's going out to people and your late nights can be watching webinars, which is when most of them are, unless they're in the States. Although even then, you know, they're usually quite late or like 1 a.m. sort of thing. But you can use that time to start identifying the skills gap and work through the training. And there's things like podcasts and uh, YouTube videos. and there's, there's so much information out there in terms of uh, training for you to help fill in that skills gap. And so really there's no reason for you not to be able to do it. Okay, so what's next? The next one, get a coach. You know, I've got a couple of coaches and they're awesome. They hold me accountable. They help me uh, make sure that I'm playing at the top of my game. Because sometimes I'm not playing at the top of my game either. It happens. We fall off the wagon. We can't get out of bed sometimes. I think this is like an entrepreneur's curse, our Achilles heel. We have ups and downs sometimes, emotionally, don't we? 
And so the coach can actually get you back and focused on what it is that you should be doing so that you can implement all the training that you need to implement and you can stay on track. And the coach can then make you accountable. We well, said you were going to do A, B and C. Have you done those things? No. Well, why not? Well, you come out with all your excuses and the coach is like, no, no, it's not good enough. Let's get, get these down. You're letting me down. You're letting yourself down. You paid all this money for a coach and you're wasting your money. You start to feel bad about yourself. Or good, depending. It's either a push or a pull, depending on how we coach, right? There's different ways of doing it. But getting a coach will make a tremendous difference in your life. And we've got clients who, are, their lives have transformed, absolutely transformed. In fact, our quickest uh, deal on buying property, let's put that slide up, our quickest deal was eight hours. That's from someone signing up and then agreeing to buying a property, and which was 20% below market value, which was about 10 grand off. And that's phenomenal, right? They couldn't do that on their own. So we fast-tracked that. In fact, they made back their coaching fee within eight hours based on that one deal. Like, I think that's amazing, right? But that's the power of getting a coach. And if you're not going to invest in yourself because it's like, well, you know, it's not a tangible thing. You know, if you go out and buy the Porsche that we were talking about before, you can see it, you can touch it, you can kiss it if that's what you want to do, you can smell the leather. But what do you do with coaching? You can't. You can't touch it, you can't feel it, you can't smell it, but you can feel the consequences of investing in a coach. And if you're not prepared to invest in yourself first, right, then what makes you think you're going to be able to invest in other things? Your, the, the four asset classes, I don't know if you know this, the first one is property, okay? The second one is uh, a business, and the third one are things like stocks and shares and gold and all of that sort of thing, right? Number four is you. You're the biggest asset out of all of those things. And if you're not investing first in you, then what makes you think the other stuff's going to work as well? Okay, so what next? Um, so the next one then is uh, don't be afraid to fail. Like so many people uh, are, are just totally afraid to fail. It's crazy. This is why we've got the Mindset and Hustle show. It's because then you can come and you can watch this, you can listen to the replay because this will go onto the podcast. You can uh, watch the replay. And too many people are so afraid to fail that it prevents them from actually taking any action in the first place. And that's crazy. Now, there's something that happens that's a little bit weird when you start getting even more successful. Because when you get even more successful, your fear of failure actually increases. You'd think it would go the other way, that your fear of failure would decrease because now you're more successful. But the things that you've failed at in the past, or, or the things that you've overcome in the past, you don't fear those, you fear the next biggest thing. And the more unsure you are in the general public. So for example, here we are, Facebook Live, any could, ha uh, could happen in the next five minutes. Absolutely anything could happen. I've got no idea. I might just totally mess this up. Uh, I was a little bit nervous before we came on because this is only my third Facebook Live. Who knows what's going to happen, right? Power cut, who the heck knows? So, anything could happen. So, I was afraid of coming out live, investing in the software, what if it doesn't work, what if you look silly, all these different things, right? So, as you move forward and you attempt bigger things, your risk of failure actually increases. And Will Smith, I remember in an interview, an interviewer was asking him and he said, after one of his films, the, the rubbish film where he was in space and these aliens were getting him, uh, but not him because he had no emotion um, and he had to teach his son um, Future Earth maybe, something like that, I can't remember. Um, what was it? I can't remember. But he was saying, because that film sort of flopped and the guy was asking him about, I think, that film. And Will Smith was saying, you know, just because we've had all these successes doesn't make me ultra confident. In fact, it makes me more worried about the next film because what if that's a flop too? What if you have a succession of flops? Uh, because that's even more scary. So don't be afraid to fail. Um, but it gets more difficult. So you've got to grow some balls, basically, because you've got to be able to fail. You've got to be able to fail forward. I screwed up loads of times, and I'm sure you have too. Uh, and I'm thinking about screwing up a bit more as well, because that's where I get my results. That's my biggest learning. But bear in mind that your, your failures don't have to be your biggest learnings. Your successes can be your biggest learnings too. So make sure that you try and balance it out with some successes and some failures. Okay, so what's next? Um, the next one. Get totally real with your own truths. So look, you've, this is where you get a sheet of paper and you write down, what are you good at? What are you not good at? What are your values? What's important to you in the context of business? What are you not good at? 
in a context of business? What's unimportant to you in a context of business? And just get all this stuff down and read it back. And be really, really honest with yourself. Because if you re uh, realise that you're really good at, let's say, presenting or speaking on stage, then you should be investing in podcasts and Facebook Live. But if that's really what you're not very good at, let's say that you're terrible at presenting, you're terrible at Facebook Live. By the way, the more experience you get, do you think the better you're going to get, right? But let's say that you're terrible at doing this stuff, your personality just doesn't match it, then recruit outside. Get someone else to come and do this or get someone else to interview you and you can do all the stuff behind. Let's say you're really awesome at doing marketing campaigns, then that's what you should be working on. Why work on your... Um, on the stuff that you're not very good at when actually you can work on the stuff that you are really good at and get far better results. So if I went and did an accountancy course, right? Accountancy course. I don't think I'd be very good doing an accountancy course. I did uh, an ordinary national diploma back in 1991 and on computers and part of that included an accounts course. Goodness knows how I passed that because I could not make those books balance, right? I just could not do it. It's just not in my... Uh, makeup, my psychological makeup. I'm, I'm terrible with paperwork, I'm terrible with accounts, I'm terrible with receipts. I have envelopes <laughs> with uh, all my receipts going there and I pay my accountant some money to go and sort all that out, right? It, <laughs> that's literally how I do it. Because I'm terrible at it. Why would I spend my time, which is really valuable, I'm best doing this sort of stuff, right? Dealing with clients that I can earn a lot more money from. Uh, than actually spending, this is a £10 an hour job that somebody else should be doing. All those receipts is what somebody else should be doing. It's not for me, right? So work out what are you good at, what are you not good at. Work on the stuff that you're good at, not the stuff that you're not good at. Okay. And so, look, you're always going to have detractors. Uh, the next one, I just realised you can't see it. So the next one is, forget what others say, follow your own path. Because look, what the heck do other people know? I don't know anything. They definitely don't know anything about you and about your mindset and about how that's actually going to work. They've got no idea about who you are, about what you can do, about your capabilities, about your dreams. And, and it's like being forced to then explain to someone else what your dreams are to justify why you're doing this particular path. Screw that. I mean, I don't justify myself to anybody. Nobody at all. I, I, why? Oh, all right, the wife, the kids, that's it, right? Nobody else. I don't justify anything at all to anybody else because I'm my own person. And what does anybody else actually understand about who you are anyway? You're always going to get detractors. You're always going to get trolls. I, I have a troll. I've got my own very personal troll. He's a, uh, uh, quite rude. Uh, he's not very nice. He uses lots of bad language uh, about me. He's just a bit of a uh, not a nice person. Um, it's Facebook Live. Try and keep it clean. But look, if, if you're getting people like that, then... It means you're going somewhere. If you're upsetting people enough that they follow you around to try and abuse you, that's awesome. I don't care. He can do whatever he wants to do. It's got nothing at all to do with me. And it's a reflection on him, not me. Okay? And it's just as it's a reflection on them, not you. But you've got to go and do whatever it is that you want to do. Whatever it is that your own path will take you. Look, we're here until we're 80 or 90 years of age, right? And um, um, when you're 95 and you're on your deathbed and you're looking back at your life and you say, I wish I'd have gone to Thailand now, or I wish I'd have gone to Australia, I wish I'd have started that business. I wish I'd not stayed in that relationship for 20 years even though I knew it was wrong. Why? Don't uh, justify what other people think. Just go do whatever it is that you need to do. We get one life and that's it. And you've got to live that life to the absolute best. Absolute best. I mean, I was just... Uh, I went through a period of uh, gratitude yesterday. I was in the car. Uh, we just bought this large TV. Uh, we got a, a Garmin Active Sync watch, which was in the thing for 240 euros. We've got the latest technology, the latest phones. We live in a villa in Spain. We've got some nice cars. I mean, we're, we're very, very fortunate. And we work really hard to be fortunate as well. But the gratitude that I have for all of that is phenomenal. But when I look back at when I was 26, which is 17 years ago, folks, <laughs> when I look back at that age and everybody said, don't buy property, don't do this, don't do that. And where are they now? They're back in the UK working this crappy job when we're here living in Spain. It's uh, 11 p.m. for us, 10 o'clock your time. And it's just amazing, right? And uh, yesterday I went to a supermarket and we can go straight down and we can shortcut it. It takes about 30 seconds off or we can go straight down to the beach and turn left. So I went to the beach and I walked in the sea in the Mediterranean Sea and I walked to the supermarket and then went back up. 
And that was my journey to receive. That's awesome. But I wouldn't be able to run in that, that type of lifestyle unless I'd forgot what others said and just followed my own path. It's really, really important, and I know it's hard to do. I really do understand how, how difficult it is to do, but it's absolutely uh, imperative. So the next one, the next slide, increase your boundary condition. So let's just explain, I think I've got a slide uh, on the next one. What are your boundary conditions? So on screen right now, I've got a, if you imagine a square, if you listen to the podcast, if you imagine a square and there's a black dot in the middle, that's not quite in the middle, is it? But anyway, if there's a black dot in the middle, the square is your boundary conditions. You have a black dot in the middle of those boundary conditions. Now, we can change the word boundary conditions for comfort zone. It's the same thing. Okay, and I'm just going to have a look to see if we've got any comments. Uh, that you would like me to uh, answer. Uh, so you have a black dot. Uh, your boundary conditions are the edges. Yeah, that's fine. So uh, the boundary conditions are the edges. Now, your unconscious mind absolutely loves you. Let me pull me back on screen so you can see me explain this. Your conscious mind absolutely loves you. It loves you beyond anything else, right? And its job is to protect you, first of all, is survival. It's this, like, this most primitive part of our mind, and it's there to protect you. And so when you say, I'm going to go out and start investing in property, your unconscious mind will, will say to you, oh, no, don't do that, that's risky. And it will justify it by listening to all these other people, by what's in the press and the newspapers, and it's really risky, right? That's, that's what people say. And it's not, by the way. Not investing is more risky than investing, by the way, if you know what you're doing. So... Because your unconscious mind loves you, it's trying to pull you back. It's trying to pull you back to this center. And it's trying to just keep you uh, right in the middle so that uh, as, when you start going near these edges, it's like, oh, no, fear, fear, fear. And it, it, it's fearful for your safety because you might get hurt. You might make a mess. It might cause some emotional pain. So it brings you all the way back to that little dot. And it does it in everything, from keeping fake through to asking the girl or the boy out across the room at a networking event or a disco or whatever you, you happen to be at a party. And it stops you because if you go and ask that person out, they might say no and then you'll get hurt. And if you get hurt, well, that's painful. So we don't want to do that. So it's best just to not bother. And so this is what your boundary condition does. And so you've got to start. You've got to start increasing your boundary conditions. And you start increasing your boundary conditions by... Going out and asking the person out, investing in property, going to networking events, and we call this little victories. You don't even have to ask the person out across the other side of the room. In fact, to get practice, do not ask them out. Just start practicing going up to people and asking them about themselves and be, strike up a conversation to be friends. That way, you're not even asking them out. You're just striking up a conversation because you're a nice human being. That's awesome. That's a really cool little victory. Excuse me. And so by doing that, you start breaking down these boundary conditions. And when you start breaking down these boundary conditions, by the way, what is beyond this boundary condition? I'll tell you, another boundary condition. But you've expanded your boundary condition. What happens is when you expand this top boundary condition, let's say this is, let's say this is confidence uh, in dating. Let's say that that's one of your boundary conditions. Confidence in dating. This one on the left, let's just say that that left-hand side of the box that you've imagined, let's say that is confidence in money. Well, what happens is when you build your confidence in dating, your confidence in mon money also expands. It's like one of those rubber rings that you blow up. You don't just blow up one side of a rubber ring because the, the air goes all around the ring. And that's exactly what happens with your boundary conditions. And so you've got to start, um, you've got to start, uh, expanding those boundary conditions by going out and doing these little victories. Start doing the extra little things that you've been too nervous to do. Not the big massive things, right? Because then you, you might fail at those, okay? And while failure's good, but you'll have a big failure. Why not start off small and work your way up to the big failures? Um, and that way, they won't be failures because every single step that you'll take will expand your boundary conditions and you're growing into that experience. So we call this fish tank theory. So, um, Tropical fish expand to accommodate to the size to accommodate the size of their tank, like trees. If you put a tree in a in a bucket and water it, it's got it's got uh, compost in it. The tree can only expand to a certain size. When you put it into a bigger bucket, 
it grows more roots, right, which is what you're doing. And it can expand to a bigger size. And then you take the tree out, you plant it in the ground, and then it can expand to its potential. And it's the same with us. But most people, you, you're living in this little plant pot. You've got to grow your plant pot. And you do that by going out and trying bigger and bigger things. Not huge, massive things all the time, unless you're like Elon Musk. Well, you know, some people, their boundary conditions are so huge it doesn't matter. Elon Musk is playing, for example, so is Richard Branson, he's playing at the size of his potential. He's not playing in this little... So let's go on to the next slide. So, number 12, get laser sharp on your expenditure. I know so many people and they, I ask them, how much money do you need to survive on every single month? And they go, I, I, I have no idea. And it's like, what do you mean you've got no idea? Why would you not know how much money you need? Because surely that's like part one of becoming wealthy. How much money? Well, I don't know, somewhere between three and five thousand pounds. Oh, so if, if we found a way to make you four, four grand, which is 400 pounds times 10 people, okay, every month. If we found a way of uh, making you four grand, is that enough? Well, I don't know. Why would you not know that? That's absolutely... Like, rule number one, get it, get laser sharp on your expenditure. You have to fully understand how much money you're spending. Because if you don't know how much money you're spending, how, mu how do you know how much money you need to earn? So, if this is what we do. We get a spreadsheet, and on that spreadsheet, we write down all the direct debits. Let's do it over here. We write down all the direct debits, and we work out what our mortgage is, what our car payment is, what our uh, coffee uh, fetish is, what our uh, uh, childcare is, gas, water, electricity, and all of that money goes onto a spreadsheet. And then you can add it all up and you work out, you get this number just at the bottom, and that number will tell you how much money, £2,353 every single month. Great. How much do you earn? 2200 Well, you've got a shortfall of 300 quid. So then you've got to go back into these expenditure and you've got to start working out, try to work out where my hand is here, you've got to start working out how much you need to... Uh, remove off that expenditure and then we create what's called a budget so let's say that you're spending f between three and five hundred pounds in fact I've got a better example for you we had a client a really nice person and um, uh, they were saying that uh, they spent five hundred pounds on entertainment last month and she said to me the funny thing is I don't even remember being entertained 500 quid is what she spent on entertainment she doesn't remember and so we've now got a budget of £200. And that, that entertainment could be anything from uh, a Netflix account or broadband right through to going to the theatre or going to the pub and having meals and that sort of thing. But give a budget. If you're £300 down, you're spending 500 on uh, entertainment, whatever that happens to be, then you can cut, give yourself a budget. And this is the thing. If you're a child in a sweet shop and you start eating all the sweets, after a couple of days you're fed up of all the sweets. You don't want to eat anymore because you just... You don't recognise it. But if you're allowed to go to that sweet shop once a month, just once a month, you're going to remember that, that visit. So this is a problem with buying nice cars, because you get in your car, your Porsche 911 we were talking about earlier, it feels like you're driving around in a Ford Escort. I mean, it's got all the power, but you just get so used to it. So I used to limit how many times I would, I would drive that car. And I had a Volvo uh, V90 estate. It was a family car. And every so often I'd get in the Porsche when I wanted to go out there and and have loads of fun driving a super fast car. And that's exactly what I did. That was awesome. So, get laser sharp on your focus, by, uh, on your expenditure. When you get laser sharp, you can then start to work out exactly what, you know, if you're saving £300 a month, that might get you a car that you might really want to drive. Okay, last one, and then we're nearly done. Uh, let me just see if there are any messages. Uh, by the way, please like and share the show. I hope that you are enjoying it. Uh, I certainly enjoy doing these. They're awesome, aren't they? They're really cool. Such a clever bit of software. Um, so, yeah, please like and share. Um, if you've got any questions, then I'm happy to answer those. Um, but let's just move on to the next slide. So, the next one, the final one. Set your goals for the day, the night before. So, on my calendar... Um, on my, this is how I do my to-do list. I've got a calendar, and on my calendar, I've got a list of all the things that I need to get done. One of which was um, doing the live cast. Uh, and actually, we're going to probably do another live cast a little bit later on today as well, probably. We've got some podcasts to edit. Uh, we've got some sliders on the website that need fixing. 
Uh, we've got a couple of coaching clients as well. So we've got a packed out day today. Um, but I know all that because we were looking at that the night before. And any spare gaps we're able to fill with tasks that need to get done from our uh, to-do list. So, hey again. <laughs> so, we, we work out everything that we need to do the night before. I'm going to sneeze, by the way. I think. So, it's live. What can you do if you need to sneeze? So, so you've got to start working out what is it that you actually want. And you've got to work that out the night before. And um, when you work that out, and then when you allocate the time into your calendar, and you'll be able to work out how much of those tasks you'll actually be able to get through. Okay, really, really important. And um, how many people do this? By the way, if you don't do this, then you should really start trying to do this, because it's such an awesome thing to do. And um, when you start doing this, you'll actually work out that you're getting more done the next day. When it becomes a habit, it becomes a really positive habit. In fact, all of these things that we've covered, let's just go right back to the start. Uh, all of these things that we've covered, uh, let me just put this on. All of these things that we've covered, I'm just going to reiterate what they are, will help you get exactly what you want to get out of life. And these should become habits. So you've got to define exactly what you want. We're coming up to the end of the show, by the way. So if you've got any comments, uh, please put them down. Please like the show as well. Uh, define exactly what you want. You've got to start getting up early. Get two days out of one. Sort out what needs doing first. Now, by the way, if you did that last one, number 13, which is working out, um, uh, working out the night before, then that's going to help. Uh, you've got to start changing your network and find more like-minded but also more successful people. You've got to identify the skills gap, get a coach, don't be afraid to fail. You've got to get totally real with who you are and what your strengths and weaknesses are. You've got to forget what other people say. You've got to start following your own path. You've got to increase your boundary conditions. We talked about that. You've got to get laser sharp on your expenditure and you've got to set your goals um, the night before. Like All of these things, if this is what you're doing, and you're going to start getting, um, you're going to start getting these results. So look, uh, I've really enjoyed going through this today. I hope you have too. If there is any questions, then please let me know. If you want more, then here's the podcast. Uh, if you just go to the podcast page, uh, then you can do that. And the podcast page is here. Uh, we're about to edit another podcast. Uh, let me just show you. The podcast page is here. Uh, we're about to edit another podcast. We're up to number 41. Uh, number 42 is being edited today and will go out today. Um, and then this uh, show that you've just watched or listened to, this will be another podcast as well. It's probably number 43. Uh, but if, you, um, if you've got any questions and that sort of thing, then please ask. If you've got anything you want me to cover, in, uh, either from the Property Cashflow Show, because we've got a number of shows that we do. So we've got the Property Cashflow Show. Let's get rid of uh, this and this. We've got the Property Cashflow Show. We've got the Business and Marketing Domination Show. And we've got the Mindset and Hustle Show. And if you've got any questions about those, oh, just quickly as well, if you want coaching and you want to know about coaching, we've got a couple of coaching programs. We've got the 90 Day Quick Start Coaching Program. If you want to know more about that, then it's daniellatto.co.uk slash start. If you want to come to the villa and spend three days with me, we've got the Breakthrough Experience. It's not cheap. It's for people that are already performing but want more. Um, so just go and take a look at that. All of that is on the website, and you can take a look at that. Uh, if you go up here uh, p uh, under products, you've got the three-day experience. You've got the nine months um, uh, coaching that we do as well for business and property. And then if you want to go to the – let's just load it up. Uh, lead pages was working a little bit funny yesterday, but I think it should still work. They made an update to WordPress and uh, it made everything go a little bit funny. Uh, let me just come back to me. So if you want those things, uh, if you want coaching, uh, then please uh, have to take a look. Uh, let's just show you this um, on the 90-day coaching. If you're looking at getting a, a coaching program, then we've got 90-day coaching program and there's a little video on there that you can watch as well if you're more serious about taking control over the next 12 months uh, then you want to sign up for a 12-month coaching package it's awesome I mean it's mega awesome right and it, it's so intense uh, and you start getting the results because we already know that we can get those results and if you want better results you want more customers you want to start investing in property then that's what you need to do so uh, that's me coming to the end uh, thank you so much I really appreciate it 
Uh, we come to the end of the Mindset and Hustle show. That was our first uh, full-length show. Uh, I've really enjoyed doing it. I hope you've enjoyed watching it, listening to it on the replays and so on. And if you've got any questions, then just hit me up on Facebook and we'll speak soon. My name's Dan Latter. Take care. Hope you have an awesome day. And we'll speak